Hi, and welcome to the Aquilting Life podcast. I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And I'm Sherry McConnell from Aquilting Life. And today's podcast episode is airing Monday, May 30th. And we're so happy to be here with you today because it is a listener questions episode. So you'll have noticed we didn't wait the full two weeks. This is a bonus episode this month. And we love those listener questions and love getting to be able to answer them. So right. And if you are celebrating Memorial Day here in the United yes. States, thanks for spending part of your day with us. Yeah. So today, I guess we should just get right into it because we have a lot of listener questions that we want to get to. So first, right. we'll, we have a couple things, but we'll start off. Mom has some quilts to share and then she has something fun to share as well. Yes. So on the tape, on the wall is a new pattern. It's called Bucket List. And it the one on the wall that you are seeing is made with our Emma Fabric Collection. It, I actually revised an older pattern that I had that was a square version of this. I thought I, it would make a really good like little lap size quilt, baby quilt, just kind of couch quilt. And But I'm super excited because there are actually two sizes in the pattern. I will just pull this out. Oh, whoa. Yeah. That was like a magic trick. So you can also do a, a mini tabletop or wall hanging. This one is in Seashore Drive, which is in stores now. The quilting. Oh, Val Krieger did the beautiful custom quilting on this one. Marion Bott did the quilting for the one on the wall. But yeah, it's my newest pattern and both... Both of these versions are included in the pattern. So I miss this gingham. I know oh, the gingham. I love this gingham. This was such a fun, yeah. And then on the table, we had a few questions about sharing some of my older patterns. And this is an older one. It's called Flower Garden. And it is pieced with our the front porch fabric collection. And as I was getting this out, I remembered how we had the text print. I loved that yeah. print. Yeah, we might have to revisit that the, <laughs> with the flowers and then the, the text. Yeah, just a really, this is a, a larger quilt and just a really, also quilted by Marion Bott, I can tell by the. It's really quilt. bringing me back because yeah. this was before I started designing quilts. And yeah. so I was just designing the fabrics and this was like really, really florally for us. Yeah. And. You're right. I love that text with the flowers yeah. and stuff. This was a really fun collection of fabrics. It feels so long ago. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then as Chelsea mentioned, something fun. This is the summer edition the of Quilts and More. And by accident, I got a delivery of <laughs> extra magazines Happy mail day. Yes. And so I have a few in my shop for purchase, but we are going to give away five copies. Look at us with all the giveaways, <laughs> you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're giving away five and you are going to explain how you enter for this one. It's a little bit different this week. Right. So, and it is US only. I'm sorry for the shipping, but I will ship it five copies in the US Go to the show notes blog post page. You can find that link in the description below and leave a comment about your number one project for your summer sewing since, since it's the summer 2022 issue. And it's a really great issue. There's a fun pillow in there by Corey Yoder. There's a cute sailboat wall hanging pillow. There are some bigger quilts. Just really really fun issue when when they showed up I was kind of like oh like I was excited to look through yeah. it so but yes quilts and more happily donated the copies for uh, the giveaway so and again that's on my mom's blog not on the YouTube channel this week so right. it's yes. different than last week's right. giveaway you have to go leave the comment on my blog for the giveaway and there so. are some beautiful projects in here. Oh my goodness, there's a Seashore Drive project in yes. here. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, it's it's a good issue. Yeah. I, I love all their issues. Yeah. So it's exciting. And I guess now would be a good time to announce the winner of last week's giveaway with the with the Eco cutting Pico mat. Eco cutting. Pico cutting mat. Yes. So we'll do that right now. And we'll pop that up on the screen right now. 
Okay, hello everybody, and now, as we just mentioned, is the time we are going to select the winner for this week's giveaway for the Eco Pico cutting mat. So thank you so much for everyone that took the time to leave a comment and also leave their favorite color of mat. And good luck to everyone. So right now, as you can see on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to pull the URL from last week's episode, copy it there, select it into the YouTube random comment picker, and let's get a winner. Okay, so in total there was 1193 comments, so that is a lot of comments in one week's period of time, so thank you so much again for everybody. And now we will pick a winner. And we have Debbie Brugman. Chelsea, I love your North Shore pattern. Mocha Brown would be my choice for the Eco Pico cutting mat. Better to have a block come out larger and be able to cut it down than a block too small. Another great podcast ladies with valuable tips. So thank you so much, Debbie. We will find you in the comments. If you would like, you can email my mom at aquiltinglife at gmail.com to let her know it's you. Um, but we will have to verify your email address, obviously, with um, your Google contact. So thank you so much and congratulations to Debbie. Okay, we're back and congratulations to that winner. We don't know who it is right now as we're recording, but yes. Billy has put that up on the screen and yeah. we will be contacting you for your mailing address. And we're so excited for you. Yes, congratulations. Awesome. Okay, listener questions. We've got a lot. So many good ones, you guys. Lots of good ones. I don't even know if we can get through all these, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, and thank and yeah, I should say thank you to everyone that did leave them in the comments. And if we don't get to it today, we will save them and yeah. add them to another thing. But they're much appreciated. Um, the first one, I guess, and and this is going to be a combination of many because one of the podcast episodes that we did when you guys talked about it was the saving what's saving your life. And right. you talked about reading. I think Chelsea brought it up first. I know mom shared a lot of books, but we had a lot of people ask about essentially what's on your reading list. Yeah. What kind of, you know, what are you reading? What genres? And, and so if you guys want to talk a little more in depth about what things you're reading right now, people were interested in that. Do you want to go first or me go first? I'm going to have you go first. Okay. <laughs> okay. So first up, I just finished... I didn't do the thing today, Letting Go of Productivity <laughs> Guilt by Madeline Dorr. And if you're watching, you can see I have some post-its still in there of some <gasps> quotes I need to write down. You annotate? This, yeah. need to get into that. Yeah, this was a great book. Really loved all of her ideas. I have things highlighted. I've added th them to some of my quotes. But it was really a great book for me because while I love being productive... Nobody needs to have productivity guilt, right? Yeah. So a uh, really great book. She, it's well-researched, easy to read, very inspirational and motivational. She shares a lot of quotes. I'm going to take a picture of really, it right now. Really great book. So, And then this one is called The Lazy Genius Kitchen by Kendra Adachi. And I love Kendra. Uh, so back... Uh, rewind, I guess. Uh, she has another book called The Lazy Genius Way that is really great. It's it's actually kind of written for young people, I feel like, that are younger than me. She has these, these lazy genius principles, decide once. A lot of things, you know, for example, from that book, you know, you kind of just decide for birthday gifts for your kids like I'm always going to give this gift you keep a stockpile of them in your closet and whenever your kid gets a birthday party invitation you have it in the closet ready oh. to go and you don't have to so she, she's really about any decision that you can make once just have a you know ready set go way to handle that and so she and she has a great podcast and so she took her lazy genius principles and she applied them to the kitchen. So this is not a cookbook. I think there is only one recipe in here. What? Right. It's not a cookbook, but it's all about how to use her, her time-saving productivity principles 
to make your kitchen life easier, whether it's organizing your kitchen, having meal planning made easy, and it's just a really great book. There's even in the back some really fun things if you're having a dinner party, how to simplify that. She, j- I just really love it. And I feel like even though I've been cooking as, you know, for I'm living on my own for, what, 38 some years, whatever, I learned a lot from this book. So I just really, really enjoyed it. I love her podcast. And that's, that's um, I actually skimmed through this. I was on a little vacation recently and I skimmed through the whole book while I was there, but now I have things I need to go back and make note of. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. So those are my two most recent finishes. I love those. I think I'm going to have to get both of these. I took, I'm sure everyone noticed I was taking pictures of them. They're both really great. Yeah. I actually gave the lazy genius way. I let your sister borrow it. Really? So did she read it? I don't know. So I don't know if you could ask her for it. Say, hey, you know, because you, you would. Oh, you gave it to her. Not let her copy. borrow okay. it, but I haven't gotten it back. But you, uh, because I feel like that would be the the Kendra book you would want to read first. Yeah, I'm super into organizing yeah. and saving time. Yeah, so just ask her if you can borrow it and then you could give it back yeah. to her if she hasn't read it I yet. don't always adhere to the methods, but, yeah. you know. Or if you borrow it, you know, give it back. Don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or just get, I. We had a lot of comments about the borrowing. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Oh, Unless I, you want me to get it back from her, and then I can give it to you. Yeah. Her, but. I forgot to mention that there <laughs> were people that that were defending you, saying that they borrowed things like an iron from their mother yeah. forty years ago or something, and so that you had people defending you. That makes me so happy. Your borrowing tactics with the things you take, but hey. that is so funny because <laughs> I actually should comment on this because we have a. A roasting pan that is was my in-laws, and I know we've had it for th- over 30 years. Because, Proof, people. Yeah. yeah. Proof. So I borrowed it from them when we still lived in Las Vegas, and we've been out here for 25 years now. This is so. amazing. <laughs> okay, but you want to know what's even funnier is I, mom and dad had told me about the comments just the other night. Well, recently... Mom and dad have been gone quite a bit. And it just so happens that when they've been gone these past couple times, like 30 boxes (laughs) from Moda have shown up. (laughs) So they're like, hey, Chelsea, you know, can you pick up the boxes? And there's a video on my social media you can see. And I thought I was so smart. I found a dolly in the garage and I think everyone I might have shared this. (laughs) Anyways, so the past couple times they've been gone, I've been taking these 30 boxes into their garage in the house. Well, this last time it was the new fabric line. So I had yeah. to go and, and I get had it. no idea it was coming until I had left. Yes, seriously. So. so I'm like, I got you guys. You know, I'm your I'm your main squeeze. I got you. <laughs> so this last time I got these boxes in the house and I'm like, and mom had told me she'd gotten like a home chef meal or whatever, blue apron. <laughs> and she goes, hey, for doing this, pick any of the meals and you can take it home. I took the meal I knew she loved the she most. She did. She took I, the one I specifically I took, ordered. I took her tilapia, people, and I enjoyed that meal. But then I was in the house and I'm like, hmm. I found a Tillamook ice cream and dad was like, I can't believe you took the last Tillamook ice cream. That's like a rule of thumb. You can't take the last. So guys, I I splurged a little, but 30 boxes. (laughs) There was something else you took out of the fridge too, right? You took uh, something of Billy's. I took, I took one of Billy's. (laughs) You took my Red Bull? (laughs) Oh, okay. I was on a roll. I'm like, I've been up here 12 times. I'm taking something from each of them. Like, so, man, why'd you have to tell him in the middle of a podcast? Now he knows. I was yeah. going to get that later, but I yeah. guess not. And, and Billy just, he leaves stuff in the fridge for when he comes out and films. <laughs> and now he doesn't have it. He's here today. Dad was like, you took my Tillamook ice cream. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, anyway, speaking of that, thank you to the defenders who um, are on my side. But, yeah, we'll move on from that. That was fun. Uh, no, uh, the books I have, I talked about how I have really, really enjoyed escaping and reading and stuff. And right. I know I talked about how I'm like a huge pride and prejudice fan. I'm like, 
a hopeless romantic. I love a good contemporary romance. That's what I'm reading right now. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of books on my to be read, but contemporary romance, number one, um, right now I've read a couple five star reads in that genre. And, uh, I just started a new, it's more, it's fiction, more fantasy, series that's that's really good so that's kind of what I'm into right now anything to just read for a little bit at night has been really great for me and I honestly feel like I'm like sleeping better (laughs) well like you get a little like it kind of helps your brain right unwind at the end of the day which is kind of nice because I don't work after my kids get home from school I'm like dinner and lunches and homework and asking them about their day and just getting everything ready for the next day. So it's kind of nice to get in bed and just read for a little bit. So, but I am thoroughly enjoying reading, which is making me so happy. So, and, that's and awesome. also to let you know in the comments, some other people said that book that you were sort of joking about that mom gave you for oh, Christmas. Maybe yeah. you should talk to someone. A lot of people said they have read it. They said everyone should read it. It's really? not like don't have a stigma about it. It's a good book. So, if if you haven't read it yet, then I people haven't. are recommending that you really do read it. It's on my to be read. Like there's a it. whole yeah. stack yeah. of books, mm-hmm. and yeah. So so just want to throw that out there. Well, thank you. So you guys all good with your books? Book yeah. list then? Yeah, I think we can books. move on to number two. <laughs> okay. So this one, I don't know. Do you want to read the question, Billy? Yeah, sure. Okay. So um, this person asks, you know, I know Sherry would consider herself a full time professional quilt designer. <laughs> She said, how about you, Chelsea? With And, and I, I know what she's getting at. I, I think I know the answer to this, but yeah. she gives some good reasons as to why. So with young kids at home, I know you could save a good chunk. I know you save a good chunk of the day for them, like you just mentioned. Yeah. Do you consider yourself full time? I'm curious how much time each of you actually spend on your profession in a given week. Thanks for all you do. And that's from Christine. I absolutely loved this and loved, uh, yeah, because I do set a specific time for my kids. I don't like to work uh, once they get home from school so I can spend that time with them. But yeah, I would say as soon as I drop them off at the bus, I go home and I work. (laughs) I I mean, I would say, man, six hours every day. (laughs) I work a lot. It's running. It is, it is a full-time business for me. It's, you know, there are so many different things that I'm doing. And so I really loved this because I sometimes shy away from that. Like, oh no, I don't do that much, you know, but no, like I'm really proud of what I'm doing and I, I really enjoy it. And I feel like people should be able to enjoy and do things that they love, even if it's work. And that's how I feel about this business. And so, yeah, it's full time and uh, I have a lot of support and it's helpful that my husband is really supportive of it. And, but I'm also able to, like she said, I make it, it works with being a mom too. And that I really, really love. So, yeah, I, I really love this question too. In fact, I periodically try to try to do time tracking for a week. I got this idea from Laura Vanderkam and you know, we have 168 hours in a week and everybody has that same 168 hours and I realize that a lot of people it's a struggle they might have a full-time job plus a commute time on top of that and so I realize what a blessing it is to be able to work from home. I I want to throw that out there in the beginning yeah. but I thought it would be interesting just to share this is the week of January 10th through the 16th and we w- we did take a little trip to go visit my husband's brother and his wife while I was kind of at the end of this time tracking so it's probably not completely realistic but I did get 64 hours of sleep that week which is Whoa. really good so almost nine hours a day. But again, we were on a va- vacation, so I probably got a little more sleep you than normal. You really time-tracked everything. I did. I spent 12 hours doing shipping of you know, distributor orders and pattern orders that week. And that includes all of the parts that go with shipping, the, the mailing labels and yeah. all of that. I spent 15 hours on meals. Seven hours showering and dressing, 
you know, in skincare, stuff like that. I spent 12 hours blogging. I really consider blogging the primary aspect of my profession that I do. So 12 hours, hours of meals, 15 hours. So if you think about it, That's if, you, s- if you spend an hour for each meal in seven days, that would be 21 hours. So that's better than I'm more because of a, that was meal prep and eating and doing the dishes kind of oh, stuff okay. like that. I'm over here like, let's throw a Pop-Tart in this. <laughs> okay. Email and administration tasks, eight hours. That's a lot. Uh, quilt design, three hours. I was right in the middle of designing some quilts this week. So three hours on designing quilts. Okay. Sewing was only three hours that week. Whoa. Taking care like of my months. home was three hours. Travel was eight hours. Our One of our driving... The commute. The com- it, yeah. What for that little vacation was on there. Uh, I spent five hours reading, two hours cleaning my office, two hours at church, two hours entertaining, two hours doing laundry, two hours doing dishes. Oh, I guess the dishes wasn't in the meal. Uh, two hours doing errands and seven hours visiting with friends. I was happy to see that I spent that much time blogging because that's what I really love. I really love, uh, you know, writing. Yeah. And so there were, there were no photography hours on there. I feel like in a typical week I would have at least an hour or two taking photographs and editing them. Yeah. So, yeah. Photography takes up a lot of time. Yeah. It really does. Cause you have to, like, if you're staging something, I actually have to do that as you know. Yeah, and I try to batch. Couple weeks. Yeah, I try to batch photography so that all in one day. Yeah, right. I do all the sewing and then just do all the photography in one day. Yeah. So so yeah, a normal week would have a couple hours of photos and editing. Yeah, added in. And that week you didn't have any. Well, I guess you included that in administration things, but would that be pattern design if if you had to do it? Well, I had the three hours of quilt design. Oh, it was was quilt design. Okay. Did you not have any film time? In that week? Nope. Must Bill, not have been Billy, that week. Billy must not have been here That's that week. That's hours of your yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Like the podcast too yeah. is hours of our time. And right. we try to do this. I, I try to come out every other week right. and we try to get as much as we can so yeah. that, that yeah. it's not a every week thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so that was one of those weeks where you weren't here. And yeah. so. Interesting. Really interesting though. I love, you know, Lori Vanderkam, we can even put a link for this. She has a time track sheet that you can just download for free from her website and just in little 30 minute increments just kind of go through and you might be surprised so uh, it was interesting too because she was doing a big challenge that week which is why I did it that week and she allowed you to email her with your time log and she would make some comments I was kind of in a focus group for a new book that she has coming out this fall tranquility by Tuesday. And so anyway, when she I love that. Yeah, I can't wait for it because I I know all of the chapters, what they're going to be about, and they're all wonderful. And they've helped me a lot this year. But she she was like, Oh, how nice that you got to sew for three hours. But I was kind of thinking when she emailed me back, but oh, but she doesn't realize that is my job. But yeah, I, I, I can't remember if that sewing I should have probably annotated that if it was personal sewing or yeah. work sewing, you know. Kate, that is so funny, though, the tranquility by Tuesday, because one of my moms, when they moved from the house before this house to this house, she was going through all of her books. And I actually was able to acquire a lot of those for my kids. And mom had tons and tons of great books for us to read. And I said, oh, can I take this one? And she's like, oh, you're not taking that one. It's called Five Minutes of Peace. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And it's about a mother elephant. And she just wants her five minutes of peace. And uh, I mean, I need to buy it. But it just reminded me of that tranquility by Tuesday. Because as a mom, sometimes I'm just like, please, five minutes. Yeah. Like, as much as I enjoy, obviously, all the aspects of motherhood five yeah. minutes guys it's kind of <laughs> nice <laughs> i love that question thank um, you christine yes thank you christine okay so the next one um getting more on quilting and fabric topic here uh someone wrote in many designer lines now have plaids and last episode you guys shared the little plaid bags yeah. and everything 
Um, I guess it's very in right now. And this listener asked, how can I use them in my blocks? And that was from Suzanne. I, I love plaids. I love to kind of turn them so they're kind mm -hmm. of like on the point and fussy cut them for a block center. There are, but you could also, you know, cut squares with different plaids and alternate them with solids or with yeah. other prints. I feel like, yeah, I love plaids and they make great backings. They do. They make great bindings. Uh, but yeah, fussy cut those plaids and insert them wherever you might have a square or rectangular block. Use yeah. them for a block center. We've always, uh, what I love, I've always loved plaids. And I feel like while designing a fabric line, I, I always separate it into florals and basic prints. Right. And the plaid is nice because it works well as a stripe. You know, it's a little bit busier, obviously. And so right. I probably like, I, I just actually started messing around with more plaids because I'm like, I want to do, I mean, we did the gingham print, right. you know, obviously, which is Close kind of to a plaid. form of a plaid. Yeah, a form yeah. of a plaid, but I just, I love them. I think they add great texture to your quilt, and it's a great design to have as a basic design. So I just think they work well in a fabric collection. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Su Suzanne. Any, any chance you guys will ever add plaids to your future lines? I think so. Uh, yeah, I've designed one. Yeah. Maybe we'll put it in this next one. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, oh, you've designed it, but it hasn't yeah, been released. Yeah, okay. has it? Well, it's not a line I've submitted yet. Yeah, okay. So okay. Chelsea's it, working on a line yeah. that we have just, well, from when we're taping this, she has a few weeks to go. But when you're watching this, it's probably already been turned in. Yeah, so. yeah. That's something I just yeah. submitted a bunch of stuff for deadlines and I needed to get that done so I could work on this fabric line and just focus on that. So yeah. I'm in the midst of designing right now, which is a lot of fun for me. Yeah. So it'll be nice to have these episodes taped so you can focus on that. Yes, it yeah. really makes a difference. <laughs> All right. So the next one, uh, how, how do you stay motivated even when you do not feel like quilting or designing? This is timely, especially when you have a deadline. I that's from Star. I'm Such a great go question. First, okay. Star. <laughs> Because you go, <laughs> I show up to my parents' house the other night to sign books because mom and I have been signing the Home for the Holidays books together. And I mean, you should have seen me. I looked, I was like, I walked in the house and I'm like, I am a thread of a human being right now. <laughs> like, because I had been working tire tirelessly on these deadlines and my husband had told me, he was like, why do you do this to yourself? <laughs> Why do you sometimes wait till the last minute? And I'm like, you don't understand. Sometimes I thrive on procrastination, but it's not healthy, you guys. <laughs> it's not good. But no, I just wasn't motivated. And mom knew I was struggling this time around to design quilts. And I'd had a moment where I wasn't motivated, but I got it done. And it's okay. I think we all need to understand you're going to have those times where you're just not motivated but also deadlines are important to me and I had to get it done. So I got together and the quilts turned out so cute. I can't I love them. wait to yeah. show you all. They're amazing. Yeah. But no, I feel like... I love like, all of our projects for oh, the next collection. I love all of them. It's going to be super fun. But no, and I don't even know what to say to adequately describe. I don't know how to answer this, but it's just like... It's okay. We're all gonna have those days. Let me let me pipe in a little <gasps> bit because no, I I think I know what you mean. Like yeah. sometimes you work better under pressure. Yes, and so Thank yes, you. it's not good to procrastinate. You recognize that. Yeah. However, you also aren't someone who's gonna quit, and you're not gonna just miss a deadline. Yes. So when it does come to that, something clicks, and you 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 get into that mode, and it turns it on. This right? is why is I that, love him. Is that yes, correct? I mean, exactly. We're, yeah. We're siblings, so we have we share some of the same genetics. <laughs> so I I find myself doing that too. And and yeah, Perfectly but, said. but there are times where I'm sure you also get ahead. Yeah. And you are motivated and things are, are clicking. So maybe you're just you're, you know, maybe we're lucky that we we have that trait to where, okay, pressure's on, I'm gonna I'm gonna, you know, turn everything on now. Yeah. But um but yeah, like you said, you'd probably rather do it the other way. Yeah, exactly. I would. Yeah, you perfectly said. Like, I didn't want to be up till 2.30 in the morning the other night, but we got it done. So, but yeah, that shouldn't be normal for, yeah, that's not how I usually do it. 
Thank you for explaining that. Something that has helped me that I have learned over the years is that, yes, like both of you, I function better with a deadline. So I will give myself a deadline that is a few days or a week ahead of the actual deadline. Oh, that's smart. And then so that mentally, seems, you're so, kind of like, this so, is the real deadline. Like, right. So mentally, I almost sometimes, in fact, one time I think I panicked you because I had given myself an early you deadline. Did. And I told you, oh, everything's due today. And you freaked out yeah. because that wasn't the real deadline. That was my self-imposed deadline. And the actual yeah. deadline was a week later. And then I had to, and then I was like emailing all these people yeah. and I probably caused a ruckus that should not, I emailed Debbie. Yeah. I think I was like, you should email Lisa. And then you're like, oh no, so, I'm sorry. That's not the right deadline. And I I'm like, sorry about that. But that's what <sighs> works for me is to give myself that, that, fake deadline that I come to believe is the real deadline and then I'm actually well not. I emailed like a plethora <laughs> of people because of your I supposed was, deadline I was really sorry about that <laughs> so, oh goodness but yeah and then another thing like how do you stay motivated when you don't feel quilting or designing sometimes for me what helps is just to sew somebody else's stuff whether it's their pattern or their fabric I really feel like that keeps me creatively charged. For example, all of this fabric just arrived for our next collection, and we did not know we would be getting it this early. Yeah. And I've been working on this sampler spree quilt from the book by Susan Aki uh, for almost a year now using all of our fabrics. And I had these blocks. And so once I realized that that fabric was here for me to start sewing with, I said, I've got to finish up that quilt of hers. And it was really inspiring because, you know, I had the book. Okay, this is how many pieces I cut for the sashing. This is how you put it together. I wasn't having to think. I was just following her pattern. Yeah. I got it all sewn together last night, ready to take it to Marion. And now I feel really motivated to sew with our stuff. Yeah. You know, and kind of write my pattern as I go along mm. with these quilts. So that's helpful for it. me. Yeah. What system do you use to keep track of projects you want to do? Ones in progress, UFOs, deadlines, etc. From Kendra. You're better at this than I am. I don't I don't know. Uh, these questions kind of like kind of went together, I feel like. So this was good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like you kind of shared with like your tracking. I just yeah. like I'm a list I'm a list maker, but yes. I like I mentioned before, I have started the top three, yes. and that is still proving to useful. be helpful. Oh, yeah, 100%. And with your little pad of paper you gave me now, <laughs> I get all excited and check mark it off. That's kind of how I'm doing it. I just have a top three. Yeah. I feel like it's super useful to have a master brain dump list of everything. I and I keep that in this. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce You're it. You're going to need a new one soon. I, I'm doing great. I'm three-fourths of the way done, but L Luke Turn, or it's a German uh, product, but so I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but I think it's great to have a master list, but I also have a separate, my quilting life planner and workbook. Yeah. Uh, just a shameless plug for that. It has, you know, hey, pages for bucket list projects, works in progress, long-term works in progress. And so it, that's a great... You know, it, it's not dated. You can use it for your monthly plan or two, but I feel like those those long-term pages are great because they'll last you for the whole year. And, you know, if the next year comes around and you don't have any space, you can, you know, get another one and transfer what is still being worked on and keep adding to it. I love to have that. I think the key with it is to, and the planner does have places where you can write what you did at a certain session yeah. So when you come back to it, you know, right where to start. I I just love to have that separate from my calendar, you know, to keep track of the sewing projects that I have. And my most importantly, my bucket list projects. And for example, this quilt that I just finished, the sampler spree, that's been a, a year long, long term work in progress. And wow, now that it's done, I have space to work on something else or add a new project. So yeah. Yeah. And you do videos on that once a month, the first Monday of every month Yeah, with the planner? Oh, yeah. We do the planner videos on the first Monday of every month. But also kind of along with this, 
we do the monthly works in progress video also. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important accountability to yourself. Just what did I get done in the last month? And what do I want to just evaluating that once a month? And since we've been doing those videos, I've actually done a better job of keeping track of that in my planner too, because oh, good. it's kind of like That's I so have, nice. yeah, I'm accountable to myself. This yes. is what I got done. And I feel like realizing your accomplishments helps motivate you to yeah. keep going. I love that. You should keep your, hold yourself accountable, but also, you know, recognize what you have accomplished. I think those are really two important things. Right. Yeah. So... Um, okay. This next question is uh, based towards designing fabric lines and everything. Um, so there's a few questions here from the same listener. So she said, when you have a new fabric, a new line of fabric, are you limited to how much of your own fabric line you get from Moda? Also, do you order the fabric in quantities you want, or do they send you a set amount of each line and, uh, and how much is yardage and how much are the pre-cuts? So just to start with that one, we get yeah. we each get some yardage of every print that we have that in that collection. The sample quilts with. Right. And yes, that's and for the sample that quilts. That is to make our sample quilts. If there is something that we need a little extra of, say, you know, for this quilt, I have all these alternate blocks with this gray print. So yeah. I can always reach out to Moda and say, Hey, I'm using a lot of that gray. Could I get a yeah, tiny an bit extra, extra yard or whatever? Right. Yeah. So we can do that. And then we also do get the pre-cuts and those are valuable for photography mm -hmm. and to help market the collection and right. show people what it looks like. Right. So that's, that's been a really great blessing yeah. to have it's those a huge blessing fabrics. from Moda. Yes. And, and a lot of times, you know, we do, we use, almost all of what we get so oh yeah mom has called me before hey i need this this and this do you have any left and i'm like i got you yeah and I sometimes we can that's one thing about being co-designers we can yeah. trade if we so <laughs> that's been a big help so so that second part here how hard is it to use when you get close to being out of one of your fabrics <sighs> knowing it's not no longer going to be available I'm, I know you probably want to save a little bit of everything just for keepsake. So I'm not attached to yardage in any emotional way at all because I save a fat quarter bundle and a jelly roll of every collection. Right. So, but mom is like, I'll walk in her sewing room and be like, what the heck? How do you have so much of this from this line that was nine lines ago? And she's like, oh, but I have to keep it. And I'm like over here, I just, I used that up. The yardage I'm not attached to, but the pre-cuts, yes. Okay, so this is my new plan for that. I'm proud I, of you. I if realize you have a it's a problem. So and I actually heard that Lisa Bonjean did this a long time ago. I didn't know what don't know why I didn't oh, start I know doing this it either. Story. But I'm gonna cut uh, take a half yard off of everything and put that on my personal shelf. Yeah. And like you, I save the fat quarter bundle. Yeah. And, and the jelly roll. The jelly roll. I also save a honey bun. Oh my goodness. And a yes. charm pack. Because someday I'm going to make this amazing charm pack project. But anyway, In but the future. I'm actually, I'm going to be teaching a class. Well, a couple of classes actually this fall at the Garden of Quilts at Thanksgiving Point in Utah. And for one of the classes, I'm going to be doing kits. And I thought, you know what? It's time to. Yeah use up some of this yardage. I'm so proud of you. For those kits that I've been hanging on to. So it's like that the the organizing lady, she's like, does this spark joy? Does I mean fabric all fabric sparks joy, but yeah. I follow the minimalists too. Uh -huh. And I just I love it. If if it's it's a weight to me. I'm yeah. very good at decluttering, you guys. <laughs> yeah. There's actually a print from Summer Sweet that I have held on to, but not to give anything away, but something very similar is, is in, this in the next collection. Next collection, and I'm like, you know what? I can finally, I can get rid of that print from Summer Sweet, yeah. that yardage on the shelf because you have that one. I'm good. I have some more. Yeah, that's <laughs> so. awesome. So the last thing she asked is, you guys already answered, is we that answered. you do have fabric from every line. Yeah. Um, yeah. From your stash, still. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not forever. Yeah. So. Yeah, but. Yeah, I feel like there's one collection I might not have a charm pack from. I can't remember if it's either Bright Sun or Valley, but uh, yeah. And sometimes I get on the Moto website 
and look to see if there's something extra older of ours yeah. that I might want to purchase. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, great question. All right. Should I answer the one for me first and then finish the last last one with you guys? Uh, yeah, I think we can like yeah. finish this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We All right. Do it. So one of the questions that was sent in to my mom, I guess is a little more directed to me. She said, Billy mentioned recently about the video site being monetized, and I wondered how that works. Is it by the number of views or subscribers or the ads that play? I usually uh, use the skip ads button once it appears, but would watch it all if it meant more for your site, but perhaps that's not how it works. So I will take the opportunity to <laughs> take advantage of this question that's that's very nice of you to say yeah basically with youtube being monetized it is based on the number of views that a video gets and as far as i understand that yes if people do watch the ads that will generate more revenue for the youtube channel um which like i've mentioned in in previous episodes recently this is what i'm i'm doing now so I get it. I, I totally understand if people skip ads and everything. I'm not trying to tell anyone to, I'm not trying to like plug that everyone please watch the ads, but if you do, yeah, it does watch help me. So yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to, to be doing what I'm doing now. Um, but yeah, th- that's pretty much how that works um, as far as the uh, YouTube channel being monetized. So um, yeah, that's, that, that's, that is how it works. I think it it was a real blessing for us too because our channel that we had just kind of casually posted videos to got monetized the day before everything was shut down in Nevada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'll never forget that. Billy was at a baseball game with his girlfriend, now fiance, and he texted me from that baseball game that he had just received an email that the YouTube was monetized. So yeah, that was just really great and, timing. For, yeah, and it and it just it, it really just worked out to where I could start doing that and working yeah. from home with my other job and yeah, and um, but yeah, I I I feel like I had something else to say about that, but but no, I it's it's grown. I'm just I'm I'm pretty proud of of what we've done and everything, and I think it's been a benefit for you guys on on different ends of promoting your products and your right. quilts and your fabric and all 100%. that. Hundred percent, absolutely. And then, We're um, yeah, very appreciative. We are. Okay, so should we just take this last little question <laughs> and then save the rest for next time? Yeah, because yeah. I this this question too, and these questions, these last two are from Maria in the UK, and when I saw this question. I was just like, this is what I think about every single day. <laughs> How did she know? It's true. <laughs> Don't I talk about this a you lot? You do all the time. But it's so funny because Mason and I were just talking about this. So she says, I am fascinated that you live in the desert in Nevada, which it is a desert. Let me tell you, we've had... It's a real desert. <laughs> zero visibility from dust storms several yeah. days this week. Uh, what do you find is a plus of living there and a minus? Why did you choose to live there? And if you could live in one other state in the USA, where would you live? I love it. So I am here uh, because my mom came here. My mom was from Iowa, and her dad actually moved out here to work at the test site way back in the 1960s. And my mom followed when she she left college and came out here and just stayed. And so, you know, been here. I've also lived uh, for a year in Utah and for a year in Southern California back in the 80s for both of those. So, uh, but I have been citizens of both of those states. Uh, Let's see, a plus of living here is a low tax rate. I would say we don't have personal income tax in Nevada. So Huge that, plus. and sometimes that's about the only plus <laughs> I can think of. Hey, uh, the taxes. Uh, I choose to live here now because 75% of my children are here, three out of the four. And 100% of the grandchildren are here. So, yeah. You have to say, I, I know you haven't lived long term in places with snow, but there's a lot of people that move here because yeah. they are done with the snow. With shoveling snow. snow in May. Yeah. That's true. Which there are people right now in the country, well, maybe not when this airs, but right, right. now, early May, 
they're, yeah. they're still dealing with that. Yes. And I've talked to people from the Midwest and from back East who are like, it hit me one day. I said, I'm done with this. I don't, I don't understand why I'm driving through a, a snowstorm in the middle of May. Yeah. I'm, I'm moving to somewhere where it doesn't snow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. Uh, we, we are in the midst of a drought right now, which a really makes it difficult. I know Lake Mead is the lowest it's been since the dam was built in the 1930s. Yeah. Uh, they're starting to ration water in Southern California because of that, because when the their Southern California water allotments are based on the lake levels, mm-hmm. and now that it's dropped, uh, Kristen Esser, who was here on the podcast, mentioned on her podcast yeah. the other day, once a week watering, and then the fall, they might not be able to water their outdoor plants. Yeah. They might have to save their bath water to take outside. To uh, So that's always an issue. Yeah, it's kind of wild how that's yeah. escalated here. That is an issue. Yeah. And I love this question also because every time I travel somewhere else, I get on my phone and I look at real estate. Oh. And I always think, oh, I'm going to live here. She does all <laughs> the time. We found this house. And I'm like, you'll never move. Oh, like, yeah, I, I, but this was interesting too. We were down in California a couple of weeks ago, uh, visiting with some friends that we've had since the eighties and they are full on Californians. Their parent, their families both live in California and there has been the question of all the, they keep saying that people are leaving California. And I said to Jim and Debbie, I said, would you guys ever leave? And they're like, absolutely. And I feel like they've never said that before. Yeah. And now they're like, I, I said, where would you go? And then they said, Las Vegas. Yeah. Because then their retirements would not be taxed as yeah. much. They could purchase a home for less than they could sell, you know, their properties more valuable in Southern California. So they said they would come to Las Vegas. And then then I go to Utah two weeks later and I'm like, hmm, could I live here? You know, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's beautiful now, but I was there in May. So. I always threaten mom, though. I'm like, no. We're a team now. You, <laughs> Billy, and me, we got to stick together here. Like, I'm always threatening that. And I'm like, your grandkids. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah. I... What about you? Where, if you, so I guess if I could live in one other state in the USA, where would you live? I would love to live on the coast of California. That would be my dream, but I'd have to be like a multimillionaire to do that, which isn't <laughs> happening. So, you know, I don't see that happening ever, but. That would be my choice if money were not an option. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I will just say very quickly, I obviously have never lived anywhere but in this desert land <laughs> in Nevada. And that is fine by me because I am such a homebody. <laughs> I am the kid that even if our vacations to California, just driving down off the hill into the valley, I knew I was home. Right. That is how I feel. I am very, I don't see myself leaving but i i enjoy living here this is my home and i will take the heat i am kind of sad about the lake though we enjoy going to the lake and it's shut down our launch ramp is closed right now but no i just i i liked being raised here and i like living here I don't know if there's a particular state, state because I like ex- I didn't really travel at all until after high school. I went on a trip back east that was really cool uh, for three weeks, three and a half weeks. But market quilt market has given me the opportunity to visit many cities, yeah. many states, and I enjoy each city and state. And I just feel like. This is my home, but I want to travel more to more places. So I don't see myself living anywhere else. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. I, unless, I think Mason would like to move back east. He wants to live next to a lake that actually has water in it yeah. now and by a boat or something. But we'll see. We'll see what's in store. Yeah. And then what about you, Billy? You've lived in Pennsylvania, California. Yeah. When you were born there, uh, you've lived in lived Utah, there Hawaii. In college, too. For yeah, one year. Billy and lived California. in Hawaii. Northern, yeah. Northern California. That's right. Yeah, I've been so, quite a few places. Yeah. Uh, I feel like when you were in Hawaii, you did finally, towards the end, get a little bit of that island yeah, fever. Where I, you... I, I think mainly that's because I didn't have a car there. So yeah. <laughs> it was sort of I yeah. that old hopping in people's trucks or taking the bus. But yeah. I, uh, no, I, I, I definitely, I loved it in Hawaii. 
again, it's it all it it always will come back to like, well, if if, if money weren't an issue, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, I, it does. I, yeah. I, I I do like coastal weather, probably the best. I I enjoy the ocean and everything. So, but th- there's just a lot of different places I like going to, and I don't mind Vegas. I like Vegas, so I feel that's a good hub for me. And I have a lot of friends in a lot of different places around the country that I feel I can always visit and go and and um. Yeah, so I'm. I'm. I don't. I, I. I like Las Vegas. I like the the history of Las Vegas and like my own family history with from your side and from my dad's side and everything. And and I think there's uh, there's 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 a richer history to that city and to 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 the to the Southwest Desert than a lot of people see sometimes. So. Right. Um, you know, I studied that a little bit in college. I had a history degree and everything. So right. I focused on that. But so I like being hub there, but I also like getting out of Las Vegas quite a bit too. Yeah. So does the heat bother you too? <sighs> it bothers yeah. me. Yes and no. Yes <sighs> and no. Like obviously I'm like, ugh, it is it is so hot that when you can even go swim in a pool and it is not refreshing at some point in yeah. the summer. But I I feel like it's a trade. Like Billy said, the snow people. Yeah. What? Where's the happy medium for you? Based yeah, off. I, of, I would take the the desert heat, yes. the Las Vegas summers over over living in snow. I don't 100%. really enjoy living in snow that much. So, yeah, it's 100%. not that I love it being 115, but yeah. I yeah I feel like I can. We make it. I'm, work. I'm used to it. So yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I feel like. All in all, we do have about seven months of it's good not, weather. Yeah, of good weather here. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's a reason a lot of people retire here. So yeah. They, yeah. They do like it. Yeah. But so there's ways to cool off. Yeah. I remember what I was going to say about the Monetization. advertising. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I, that's what I wanted to say was we do have no choice. One thing that every once in a while pops up, especially during political season oh yeah is we have yeah. no choice over ads. what ads do pop up on yeah. youtube just want to not ads we we choose that's all google yes. and it, a lot of those ads are directed towards whoever's you watching it basically if you live in like a swing state or something like that you're probably going to see a lot more political ads it has nothing to do with us, with I, have, us I, choosing, I don't choose yeah. anything so yes. any products that pop up anything any yeah. yeah anything like that it's it's all through google it has right. nothing to do with us all right. i do is say yes i will add you know accept monetization on this channel and then they do the ads and then the revenue comes from there but yeah so that's i it, it hit me yeah. while you guys were talking later i'm like oh that's what i want to say we want we want people I'm, to know yeah i'm so glad you mentioned that too because that happens on the blog too i have yeah. an ad company and they choose the ads and you know i do have some categories that I've chosen not to have on there. I, you know, I don't want anything that's, uh, I don't know, like <laughs> trying to think of the ones I took off, but, uh, you know, I, I obviously not appropriate for your website, inappropriate, yeah, yeah. inappropriate content yeah. is, but yeah, but I have had emails in the past too. Why are you supporting this person or that? And I'm like, I don't. Yeah, you don't yeah, choose them. I don't choose the ads. Yeah. So it's the ad company. So yeah, so that was great. But this was a fun yeah, listener question episode. I love always getting back to the listener questions. Yeah. I think it's great. And we had a great variety, quilting related and non-quilting yeah. related. So that was and fun. I, yeah, and I'll try to be better about some questions are so specific to me. I'll try to be better about getting on the comment section and answering those specific questions to me, but yeah. we do save all the questions and we try to get to as many as possible, but yeah. Okay. So our next episode is airing Monday, June 13th. And so we will see you then. And we're so glad that you joined us today. Yeah. Thanks so much for stopping by.